Now in this one, what we're going to talk about is how you end up replacing this fan motor. We've determined the fan motor has failed and we need a new one. So what are we going to do? Now this may be my first problem here. I've killed the power to this thing and double checked it. What do I do with this board? I got to slide this fan motor or the fan assembly out. So what do I do with that board to get it out of the way? The first thing I'm going to do before I get any farther, I'm going to disconnect all the wires that go to the fan. Now here's my common and all my speed wires and here's my wires to the capacitor. I can take the whole capacitor out if I want on this one. Now I'd recommend if you're unsure what you're doing is take pictures of this before you take it out and that's going to help a lot. When we look close here we're going to see there's a couple of screws. Uh, there's one right there and there's one right there. So this means this whole assembly has got to slide out. Okay. By the way, this is an old uh, Janitrol GMP model. And I'm using it as a general replacement. Things are different on different furnaces, but the general operation is the same. Okay, before I slide that out, you see I got this right here? That's a uh, limit switch. It's actually a rollout switch. I've got to take it out because when I slide this out, it's going to hit the switch. Okay, now I'm not disconnecting this switch because I'm going to disconnect as few things as I can. Because the more things I disconnect, there's a more chance of having problems. My next issue is going to be this wiring. And I've got it tied right here. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut that wire tie. I can replace it later. So I have a little more room. On some of these units, there will be a plug up here. And you can just unplug the plug. That makes it easier. This one does not have that. So I'm going to have to deal with this wiring loom here. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, bracket that holds on the uh, control board and some of the low voltage control. Now the reason I'm taking this off is I may want to clean this blower assembly. I'm going to be moving it all over the place and if I knock things loose, I'm going to damage something on the board. So we'll just, uh, we'll just get it out of the way. And of course, you notice right here our fan motor has already been disconnected. You might notice this also on the bottom of the uh, blower assembly. There's another high temp limit. So I'm going to take it off. Leave it wired up. Just take it off. Now I've got everything ready to disassemble this blower assembly. And get this motor out and replace it. Okay, once that's removed, so I don't have that stuff all in my way, I can begin the mechanics of this thing. Uh, pretty simple. Take off the set screw over the other side. I got to take these bolts off. Okay, I've had a little trouble getting this uh, shaft to move, so I've raised the blower a little bit off the floor, and if I have to, I'll get a puller for it, but if I can get away with a piece of wood, oh 
Okay, the wood's not going to help. I'm going to have to put a puller on this thing. Okay, I put a puller on this thing. I'll link a video about these type pullers. I actually got a couple of them out there. Okay, now we're done with that. And there's our motor. I wanted to note one more thing in this motor. This is an OEM motor. It's got integral mounts to it. I can either go to the factory and get this motor with these mounts on it, or I can use an aftermarket bracket. Well, I'm going to use an aftermarket bracket on this thing, but I should note while well, I do this, that the specifications are on the blower right there. Okay, I thought I'd do a little bit of a close-up on this thing. We're looking, when we replace this motor, we're looking for one that has the same characteristics. Now this is a half horse, 115 volt, 7.8 amps. The 7.8 is probably the most important part of that out of the course in the voltage because the motor you replace it with must be that or higher. The other thing you need to know is the RPM is 1075. Don't get something that's got a different RPM because it's not going to work right. Here we have the rotation, this clockwise facing shaft, and it takes a 10 uh, microfarad capacitor. There's a wiring diagram here that you may want to take a picture of. So that when you put the other one on, you'll, uh, you'll be able to compare. Okay, now because this is a, an OEM uh, motor, and this is just a uh, test mule is all it is, so I'm just kind of faking it on this thing. I'm going to put another motor in it that's similar, but it's a used motor off another machine, and I'm going to fabricate the mounts for, for a bracket to replace this. So let's see how that works. Now here you can see I put the motor in there temporarily because I'm going to have to knock some holes in there for that new bracket. It's not a new bracket, it's a used bracket, but whatever. I uh, have centered the motor in the hole. I've also got the wiring coming out towards the front uh, so it's going to connect up easier. So next I'm going to show you how we uh, mount that thing, physically mount that on the blower assembly. Now here's what I like to do on these things. If you buy one of these brackets, because you can buy them aftermarket, uh, they come with sheet metal screws. The way I like to do sheet metal screws, especially these that have quite a bit of load on them, is I like to use this. Now this is a scratch all and I'm going to put my holes in with the scratch hole. If you notice that hole, it's kind of dimpled down, and when I put the sheet metal screw into it, it's going to grab onto more than just the sheet metal, because the sheet metal is bent in, and that's how I want to do that. I don't like drilling those things. It's not that strong in the sheet metal, and it can shake loose. But if I dimple it down with the scratch hole, it fits pretty good. You just got to make sure you get it uh, lined up properly. Okay, now I've got all three of them mounted. I've got the ground wire on. The only thing I got left to do here is turn this thing over and center the uh, blower wheel and tighten it down on the flat of the shaft. Now here, what I'm trying to do is I want to get this flat of the shaft lined up with the uh, set screw, otherwise it makes it a mess to ever get off again. Okay, once I've got that set, I want to look here. Okay, now I want to look to be sure that blower wheel is centered. Now I'm going to knock this in a little bit. I'm pretty well centered. Get my set screw down tight, and I'm ready to put this thing back in. Okay, and this is a kind of a pain in the butt part. But you got to get this blower in here, and you got to get it lined up. You're probably not going to see this very well. And after you've completed 
a requisite number of swear words. You'll get it into the slide and it'll go back in and you can bolt it back up. Now I'm going to put this thing back together and we'll see how it works. Now, get everything put back in, reverse order what you did before, be sure the capacitor matches the motor, the new motor, and uh, get everything tight. Okay, make sure all your wires are back on where they should be. Maybe compare it to a picture from beforehand. Put your uh, wire tie on there and you're ready to go. So you feed power to it and turn the fan on. Now I've got the fan jumpered right there on this thing. So this thing should take off and we're going to check amp draw on it. Okay, everything wired up. I'm going to give it power and we should be 7.8 was its rated load. We're running about 6.8 now. So we're within specs on this thing. I would check it in all modes. I'm not going to do it here, but fire up the furnace, uh, check the amp draw then, uh, do as I did, jump her out or set the fan switched on and you're back in business. You are listening for any uh, metal noises. If the blower hits uh, the housing at any point, you're gonna have to take it out and do it over again to be sure it is lined up properly. The other thing about this whole thing is if you come out of here after taking that blower out and do not have lacerations on your hand, you weren't working very hard. Because these things got a lot of sharp corners, you're probably going to get some knuckles bark and stuff like that. Anyway, that is how to replace the fan motor on the 80% furnace. I'll probably do another one on a 90 because there's some uh, drain hoses and stuff you have to deal with. But anyway, that's it on this one.